Welcome to part C of session 20. In this part, I'm going to discuss uh, unemployment and how um, uh, the government, uh, especially the Bureau of Labor Statistics, computes uh, unemployment rates and employment rates. Um, so here's the, the main idea. So uh, uh, this is done by the Bureau of Labor Statistics. So um, it's people who have an economics degree uh, living in Washington, D.C., that they're the ones who, who do these calculations. This is all done by surveys, okay? So, uh, as the book mentions, there's a misconception that uh, it's done by calculating who gets unemployment benefits. Uh, no, that's not it. It's all done by survey. In particular, it's about 60,000 people that the Bureau of Labor Statistics contacts and ask them a series of questions. Um, do you have a job? That's the main one. Uh, if not, are you, do you not have a job, but are you looking for work? Um, various questions that they ask. So it's easy to calculate the number who are employed. So that, that's, you just ask that question, uh, do you have a job? Now, you can get in some intricacies, you know, is it part-time work only or full-time work, and do you want to full-time job when you only have part-time. So as I learned from the chapter, I didn't know this before I read the chapter, there's six or seven different ways to calculate uh, that the Bureau of Labor Statistics uh, creates. Now there's, I'm sure, lots of other ways that you could imagine. And they call it U1 to U6. Um, so uh, don't worry about those things, okay? The key is this main big idea is that one, they determine, they de define in a precise way whether a person is employed or unemployed. For this class, it's always it's always going to be very clear. I'm not going to give you some nebulous thing about whether someone's only working 30 hours a week, whether that counts as employed or not. So I will say, and if it's a test question, here's how many are employed, and here's how many are not employed. So with that question, you, you count how many people are employed, and then you count the number of people who are unemployed. Okay, who, okay. Now, the key is of the people who don't have a job, some we count as unemployed and some we count as not in the labor force. So, for instance, if you're retired, uh, and you mentioned that on, the, um, uh, on this survey when the, the, the question taker calls you up, uh, or if you say you're under 16, you're also not in the labor force. And it turns out even if you have a job and you're under 16, they still count you as not in the labor force. Okay. You don't need to remember that detail, but the key is there's some people we don't count as unemployed even though they, they don't have a job, okay? So the key is if you are if you don't have a job but you're not really looking for work, we don't count you as unemployed, okay? But meanwhile, there's some people who don't have a job and they really want to work, okay? We count those as, as unemployed. Now, there's also various ways, uh, what if... Um, you know, my former job, I was making $20 an hour, and I got mad at my boss, and I thought, it's beneath my dignity to work for such a low wage, and I want a job for $25 an hour. And I looked, I got job offers for $18, $21 an hour, but I kept refusing. Do you count me as unemployed? You might say, you're not really in the labor force. You have this... Uh, pie in the sky attitude of what you're really worth, you know, uh, you're not really trying for a job. The Bureau of Labor Statistics has different ways of classifying that. We won't worry about that. We're just, if it's an exam, I will say whether you are, if you don't have a job and not looking for work, or if you don't have a job and you don't really care to look for work, okay, it'll be easy to classify these people. So you're in one of these three categories, okay, so uh, by the way, so two of them, the red part, are those in the labor force, employed and unemployed, and the third category, not in labor force. Okay. Now, when you hear these statistics on the news, a percent unemployed, here's the way it's calculated. So uh, here's an example. You, uh, the Bureau of Labor Statistics just counts the people from these surveys, and they extrapolate them, but what it probably exists in the uh, population at large. So in the U.S., uh, in 2020, there's about 330 million people. Let's assume that 135 million of these have a job. Um, 180 million 
are not in the labor force, and then 15 are unemployed. They uh, are um, in the labor force, but they don't have a job. Okay, they're looking for work. What's the unemployment rate? Well, you, you don't count this this third category for when you when you calculate the unemployment rate. Just take the first two, take the first one divided by the sum of the 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 first two. So 15 divided by 15 plus 135. 15 divided by 150. Get 10 percent. That would be the unemployment rate. Okay. Um, okay. Now, let me explain something kind of curious, paradoxical about the way we calculate the, these things. So normally we think that when the economy gets worse, unemployment goes up, and that makes sense. Uh, but because of the way <clears throat> we calculate these things, the precise way we make these calculations, you can have some paradoxical consequences. In particular, suppose this happens, that um, <clears throat> this is the way things are. These are the numbers. The economy gets so bad that... Uh, but it really doesn't hurt the people who already have a job, okay? They they continue. Um, there's this recession. Uh, but the people who are unemployed just start getting discouraged. And they say, look, you know, I've been trying. There's no way I can get a job. I'm going to stop looking, okay? Let's suppose that half of them in this category, when the Bureau of Labor Statistics calls them up, where before they said, I'm actively looking, and now half of them say, no, I still don't have a job, but now I'm not even looking. If so, we would say, let's say that half of them, so now that's uh, 7.5 million are unemployed, but the 7.5 of those, the other 7.5, are added to those not in the labor force. So you get 187.5 not in the labor force. So things have gotten worse, okay? What happens to the unemployment rate? Okay, so now we're using green. This 15 becomes um, 7.5. That 15 becomes 7.5. So it's 7.5 divided by 142.5. And I don't have a calculator. I wouldn't ask if I, on the exam, I'm not going to allow you to use a calculator. So you, you wouldn't have to. Uh, know this exactly. I would give you easier numbers. Uh, or you could do, say, it's approximately half. It's going to be something like uh, 5% now. And actually more, something like 5.5, .5, something like that. Um, but the irony is, even though the economy got worse, the unemployment rate got better. There were fewer people who were unemployed. Okay, and that, that's one thing that can happen with, with these statistics. And so um, um, we say sometimes that the statistics may not measure exactly what we'd like to know. Uh, and maybe a better way to calculate these things would be just the, the um, uh, to, to lump together the unemployed and not in the labor force, that, that might be a, way, a better way of, of, of indicating how strong the economy is or, or how weak it is. Uh, but regardless, that's what the Bureau of Labor Statistics normally uses, and that's normally what's reported on the, on the news. But I want you to know uh, a few of the details that, that go into how that, that number is calculated. Okay. Um, Okay, um, next thing I w want you to know, a uh, final aspect of this, um, is a possible test question. Okay, and here it is. Okay, very good chance this very exact question uh, will be on the exam. Um, suppose I wrote, it's such an injustice for there to be any unemployment at all, consequently... Most economists agree that we should strive, the U.S. should strive for an unemployment rate of 0%. The answer to that would be false. Okay, I want you to know, read from the text, that there's something, there's a notion called a, a natural unemployment rate. And that, it, it's basically almost impossible to get that number down to zero. And partly just because... At any given time, even if the economy is doing extremely well, 
uh, there's going to be a few people uh, who are going to quit their job and, and try to find another one, often a better job, but there may be one or two weeks where they're looking for a job or they're moving to the, the new job, say. So in those cases, those people, even though they're better off than they were a week ago because they've all of a sudden got a better job or they expect to have a better job soon, uh, they would be counted as unemployed, okay? So we think usually it's something, you know, 1% or so, maybe it's 2%. At any given time, people are just transitioning between jobs. And to get, so to get the total unemployment rate to zero, you would have to force people not to switch jobs. You'd have to make sure that you, you stay put to get that thing down to zero. So it's a little too much to ask, economists, almost all of us agree, to get it down to zero. Um, it, one uh, f final anecdote uh, uh, I want to give you on this. Uh, one time I was living in the Boston area, and um, turns out I had, I'd actually uh, changed jobs. Um, I was about to. Um, but that's not relevant. What is relevant is I needed to move. And I called up the moving company and said, you know, here's the date I need to move. And they called me back and said, yeah, okay, great. That day works for us. We got a truck at least. And I said, the problem is um, the Boston area, it turns out there's a labor shortage. We can't find <laughs> anyone to load your, your goods onto the truck. And I said, well, you know, if you really need me, you know, if you're, uh, you can just hire me. And <laughs> the guy says, you know, that was my second question I was going to ask. We were going to propose that. Uh, we pay $10 an hour. Would you would you be willing to basically hire yourself? And I said, sure. And they did. So I hired the moving company. The moving company had a, had a driver who was basically the foreman for the job. He had another helper. And then I was the third helper. They, they hired me. Um, in that case, I'm sure the unemployment rate in Boston, even though it was so low, you're having to do these drastic things like hire your own customers to be your laborers, I'm sure the unemployment rate was not zero. That It was something like 2 or 3 or 4%, yet that is ridiculously low. There was definitely a labor shortage. And in that case, most people would say, no, zero is too much to ask. Um, okay, so economists, that's why that's false. Zero say, economists say, no, nah, you really can't get to zero. And if you try to get to zero, you're going to cause other problems, things like inflation or a labor shortage. You're going to have moving companies who can't find any workers, uh, things like that. Um, the book mentions... The economists disagree about what the natural rate is, but I think a lot of us say it's something like 4%. That, like, if you go below 4%, you're going to start having problems. The, the, the key is to shoot for a very low rate, something like 4%, and if you go lower than that, uh, you're, you're going to have problems. Um, okay, I think that was all... Okay, so that's all. Uh, that's the part C, uh, all the explanations about how unemployment statistics are calculated. Um, okay, I'll see you in part D.